On my 18th birthday, I was given a book called The Passion of Peace, which was to change my life. It was given to me by its author, Dr. Kieran McKeown, who was one of the founders of the peace people here in Northern Ireland. And on the inside cover, he wrote to me, may you dedicate your life to how we as human beings might better relate. And those words have been inscribed in my heart as my life mission ever since. And how we're going to better relate and connect and understand each other is an enormous challenge, especially when you consider that our generation will witness more change in our lifetimes than has happened in the whole of the last century due to the technological and digital revolutions taking place. And how we make the needs of our society compatible with the needs of our planet means that how we live and work and share our world is going to profoundly change. But I believe that that is what makes this one of the most exciting times to be a citizen. Because never before has the individual citizen had the ability to shape change as they can right now. The era in which a privileged few wield power is over. We are entering a new era. One of civic participation. One in which connected citizens drive change through building relationships based on shared values and mutual respect. Think of Greta Thunberg and her solitary protest outside her parliament in Sweden. Her call to action inspired a generation around the world to act. And you have that power. You have that power right now. You see, throughout my life as both a lawyer and civic activist, I have become convinced of one thing here in Northern Ireland, and that is that we have everything we need to realize the enormous potential of both our people and our shared home place. Why? Because of the inspirational citizens who quietly drive change here every day. And you are going to be part of this connected citizens movement, of this new era of civic participation. And I'm going to share with you today three principles, three interlinked principles that I believe we will need as citizens if we're going to meet the challenges both locally and globally that we need to face together. They are to listen, inform, and act. So first, to better connect as citizens, we need to listen. We all have something we believe in. It might be our uh, faith, our identity, our political cause. And of course, that's a really important part of being human, of being a citizen. And a lot of our life is spent seeking out our fellow tribe, those people who share those beliefs. But if we're going to truly understand each other, and if we're actually going to solve the really complex problems that we have to face together, then we need to do something that requires both courage and humility. And that is to engage with the people with whom we disagree. Now, a number of years ago, I was on a leadership program in Japan with young people from a range of nationalities from right around the world. And one evening over dinner, a young Arab man and I were talking, and I discussed with him that I was openly gay. And he told me that in his religion, homosexuality was a grave sin. And over the coming days, I could feel he was avoiding me. And this caused me to feel upset and, and a bit angry. But I decided that I would try to understand the issue from his perspective. Now, the Muslim delegates on the program on a Friday afternoon would go to a prayer room to pray. And I decided to join them. I was made very welcome. And at the end of the prayer session, this young Arab man came towards me. He had tears in his eyes, and he embraced me. And he said, you have shown respect for my religion. You are my brother. Now, neither of us changed in that moment. I am still a gay man. He is still a devout Muslim. We are still friends. But something much greater brought us together, mutual respect and compassion. So what can you do to listen better? 
Well, first of all, we need to get out of our comfort zone. We need to engage with the unknown. We need to listen to the stories of the people we don't understand or with whom we disagree, because it's much easier to relate to people's stories than it is with a label. And we also need to judge people only on their values, not on what church or political party they support. You see, values like compassion and respect bring us together in a way that ideologies simply cannot. And perhaps this is what a new era of citizen solidarity will look like, one in which we come together on, based on shared values, not on the ideologies, political and religious, which have kept us apart for far too long. And we need to tune out from the noise. We're all guilty of shouting at the talk radio show, of being outraged on Twitter. Perhaps next time we need to find ways to turn our energy into positive action elsewhere. Second, to better connect as citizens, we need to inform. One of my life heroes is Eileen Weir, who works at the Shankill Women's Center in Belfast. And Eileen has dedicated her life to the empowerment of women. And during the Brexit referendum, I was working on a civic uh, engagement program, which worked with groups like Eileen's. We weren't trying to tell people how to vote. We were simply listening to their hopes and fears and presenting them with informed evidence on both sides of the debate so that they could make up their own minds. So Eileen asked me to deliver one of these workshops to the women in her group. And at the end of the session, this woman raised up her hand and said, I just want to say thank you. No one ever comes here to explain these, thing to, these things to us. We just get leaflets through the door. But you came here, you listened, and now I know what I have to do for my family. Those words speak a truth to all of us, because we need to talk more about our democracy. We need to talk about the kind of society we want to be. We need more places and spaces in which a diverse range of citizens with a diverse range of opinions can come together to share their stories, to listen to each other, and to feel that they matter and they belong in this society. We all have a responsibility to make sure that all citizens have access to evidence, independent information, to allow them to make decisions to solve challenges for their circumstances, their community, and their family, not to be told what to do or what to think. And perhaps all of this will help to create a culture in which compromise is an ideal, not a sellout. We also need to be more like Eileen. We need to get behind the everyday change makers, the artists, the collaborators, the disruptors, the entrepreneurs, those people who drive change every day. Driving change isn't easy, so let's get behind them. And perhaps we can start by getting our children to follow these kind of influences. I'm convinced of one thing. Binary outcomes rarely resolve complex issues. What works far better is a diverse range of citizens coming together based on a shared set of values and collaborating to co-create outcomes to solve the challenges that they face together. This is far, they will have far better ideas than individually. Collectively, they can do much more. Thirdly, in order to better connect as citizens, we need to act. It's said there are two parts to our lives. The first, where we grow and develop, and the second, where we live out our purpose. And when your purpose awakens within you, it is a privilege. So act. That voice within your head that says, this isn't right, or I could do this better, raise it up and act. And when you act, it creates an energy to inspire and engage others to act too. So speak up. Don't ask for permission. Join a political party. Set up a campaign group. Donate money to a cause you believe in, and whatever you do, vote. You see, here's the question. What kind of society do you want for your children? Are you going to answer that question, or are you going to continue to leave it to others to answer? And there's an urgency to that question, because this generation, this generation right now, 
could be the first generation in the history of this island to grow up knowing nothing but peace and to realize the promise of reconciliation. No other generation has gone from cradle to grave on this island with that possibility. We simply cannot fail. As citizens of this connected world, how will we better relate? Listen, no child is an outsider. Inform, educate, and empower others. Act fired by kindness, compassion, and grace. Know this, your power as a citizen lies in your imagination, and in our collective imaginations lie infinite possibilities for change. And that's how we're going to better relate. That's how we're going to build up and realize our home of hope and of peace and prosperity. So let us, as connected citizens, arise and go there now.